Howdy there once again, YouTube. Here we are at the Old Faithful webcam at the wonderful Upper Geyser Basin at Yellowstone National Park. Okay, so today, right now, actually is 11.40 a.m. Pacific Time, February 27th, 2019. I just want to get into a few things. By the way, if you haven't checked out my recent videos, please do so now. It contains a good amount of information, actually, and you'll be surprised as to what you find. And I also got some even better information coming in my future videos, including how to read spectrogram size with plots and more, which actually, if you want to skip to that right now, just go to my website, go to the how to drop down menu and click, and click, excuse me, read spectrogram size with plots and more. A link to my website is in the description box below. And I'm working on a few different sections to another part of my website about how to create your own GPS deformation charts. I'm still working on that video. I really do not want to get that video out there to you guys until I fully understand it myself because I still have a few things I'm having problems with uh, in regards to creating my own GPS charts and understanding how to actually do it. So before I give it to you guys, I want to make sure that I know it all. But don't worry, it's still in the works. Almost the end of the month, which means my monthly update is on the way for February. I believe tomorrow is the last day of February, right? It's no, There's no leap day today or two days from now, right? I don't think so. I don't think this year's a leap year, but right now I just want to get into a few things. Some interesting events have transpired over the past week, especially that crazy low-frequency earthquake swarm that struck in southwest Wyoming just north of Green River. Check that out on my blog post. Go to my website. Go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu. Click Quake Swarms. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> Click Quake Swarms, and then just go to the most recent post about the southwest Wyoming swarm. It was crazy, guys. Definitely one of my favorite swarms I've ever analyzed, ever. One of them. There are some other swarms that have occurred in the world that I like a little better. Kind of like the 2008-2009 Dyke Intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. That's probably by far my favorite. But I do have a few things to tell you guys. Especially, there's an earthquake in London. Alright, but before I get into that, I just want to show there were just a few earthquakes at Yellowstone. Uh, I believe there were two over near West Yellowstone, near Maple Creek, and one at the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. I can confirm that count for today is true. It's accurate. It's been pretty calm the past few days, except for a little few earthquakes here and there. And let's go to isthisthingon.org. Remember also that Steamboat Geyser did erupt, uh, what, what was it, two days ago, I believe? I think it was two days ago, yeah. Two days ago, it erupted, and it it was a pretty weak eruption, guys. If you want to see all of the plots, just don't take my word for it. Just go look at the data. It's on my website under the Seismic Events drop-down menu under Steamboat 2019. Also, don't forget to visit Steamboat 2018 to see all of the seismic plots and images regarding all of the Steamboat eruptions for all of 2018. Here we are on org Again, they were reporting a... What was the magnitude again? Right on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake, they're reporting a magnitude of 1.9 at 2.0 kilometers in depth. It was a lonely earthquake, and it was the only earthquake that struck in this area at this time. Let's try to find the closest seismic station, which normally would be Borehole 208. Now, I thought this was a problem with their receiver, because sometimes they do have problems with their whatever, whatever server that they have online keeping these helicopters, because sometimes you see how there's no data, right? Barely any data. There's only one little tiny line of data. Um, sometimes when this happens, I go on the data download sites, like this one right here, and I download the data for Borehole 208, and let's say sometimes it doesn't show anything on the helicorders online, like on isthisthingon.org. Well, it'll show the data, though, and I'm, and I'm thinking in my head, wait, so it doesn't show on the online charts, but it's showing on the charts that I can create? from the downloaded data from their archive. So that just probably means that the data did not reach the server. However, I would like you to note, it seems that this is an actual loss of data. I wanna know why? See how it says 226, so February 26th in Mountain Time. Over here, UTC is a little bit ahead. So that would mean this was the, let's see, they have the 26th mark right there. That means right here is the start of the 27th for UTC, right? Looks like the data stream ends right here, right? So let's just say maybe around 12 UTC on the 26th. So let's go here. Let's go to the 26th, borehole 20800. Okay, let's download data. Nothing. They ain't showing nothing. Do you see that? Nothing. Let's go back just one last time. PB, borehole 208, dash dash EHZ. So, it's all correct right there. 2019-02-26, T-0-0-0-0-0-0-0. 2019 228 t 0 0 0 0 0 That's all correct. 
everything is correct and we should see some type of data being retrieved from the station, but we don't at all. So I'm not happy about that. I'm really not happy that Borehole 208 is down. That means the entire northern section of Yellowstone Lake is now unmonitored. The closest monitoring stations for the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake, which is sometimes where we see some rapid fire swarms, guys, is YUF and YLA. Those are the, pretty much the closest stations now. Yeah, not happy about that. I really hope to get Borehole 208 back up. But something I find very interesting is Borehole 950 is not seeing a change. Borehole 206 is not seeing a change. And Borehole 944 is not seeing a change. Okay, so then why is Borehole 208 going out? I don't know. So we'll probably have to use the second closest station. So let's click on here. Again, a magnitude 1.9 at 2.0 kilometers in depth. Let's see what the closest station was to this earthquake event. Again, since Borehole 208 is out of commission, they couldn't use that, which that would have been the closest station to the earthquake. But they decided to use YLA as the closest station. It is the closest station, excuse me. So let's use YLA, WY, YLA, 01EHZ, from the 27th to the 28th, 00, 00, 00, 00, 00, 00. we all got zeros. All right, now let's download it. Here we have the data stream from YLA in the seismic program swarm. Now, here is the magnitude 1.9 at 2.0 kilometers in depth from YLA. I really wish that we had borehole 208, but again, we don't. Frequencies are a little bit lower than what I have, uh, what I would have expected for this magnitude 1.9, but I have noticed some of the stations in the WY network do record frequencies a little bit lower than they actually are. However, the accuracy still isn't too bad, but still. Let's go to the dominant frequency range just for a second. Turn log power off. Going above be beyond 10 hertz. So let's turn log frequency off. See the dominant frequency stop at about 12.5 hertz. Where the peak of the frequency stop at about 5.1 hertz. This was not a low frequency earthquake and it did occur somewhat far away from the station. So we should see the frequencies drop just a little bit. So... This is not a low frequency earthquake though, guys, but it does look quite interesting. Look at that. It seems that the S waves have some higher frequencies. At least that's what it seems just from looking at it. Very interesting, guys. So that was the 1.9, and then later on we have background noise, background noise, background noise, blah, 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 blah. And then we have these two little spikes, which I thought were very interesting. I first just kind of ignored them and thought they were like some type of electronic malfunction or interference but now I'm looking at them they look at they look like some type of tiny tiny but deep earthquake to me this kind of looks a little deep I don't know let's look at the spectrogram just real quick don't those look like little teeny teeny tiny little micro minis <laughs> look at how tiny they are these definitely are not electronic malfunctions this is definitely looks like some type of very very tiny but deep earthquake as well and after that on YOA everything is pretty much calm and you can see that all the way down here so we pretty much don't see much anymore but I am expecting again in the next two years at the max I am expecting caldera wide uplift to begin again but I am expecting another rapid fire swarm to occur in the next month so let's move on to something else that's interesting Okay, so first off, Oklahoma did have some earthquakes recently. Let's zoom in. We do have a few of them right here, a 3.8 and a 3.2. This magnitude 3.8 was originally marked as a magnitude 4.0 earthquake, and they say it occurred at 1.6 kilometers in depth. So it was pretty shallow, guys. It was a pretty shallow earthquake. So let's go check it out. The 3.2 was not too long afterwards, I believe. 3.2 occurred at 13, so I'm going to say the 3.2 occurred about 13 hours or so after this one right here. Again, this was originally reported to be at 4.0, but now it's a 3.8 and 1.6 kilometers in depth. So far, 65 people have reported feeling it as of 11.54 a.m. Pacific Time, February 27th, 2019. And let's go down. No economic losses or fatalities, of course. 3.8 most likely would never, ever cause any of that. And, but we do have a moment tensor right here, fault plane solution. And so let's go to origin and see what the closest seismic station was to this event so we can get a good look at both the 3.8 and 3.2 since they did occur somewhat near the same epicenter. So, it, so USGS is stating the closest seismic station is, o, is GC02 in the OK network, short period vertical, no location code. 
Here we are in the Iris Data Select URL Builder. And again, link to this is in the description box below under resources. So let's check it out. OK Network. And it was what? GC02, right? Dash dash EHC. I already got the time period selected. Let's click it. And it looks like it worked. So let's check it out in the program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. We have GC02, OK, which according to USGS was the closest seismic station to this event. This right here does look like a surface event, extremely high frequencies, and it is emergent. Definitely looks like a surface event. Let's go forward. We have possibly, this is possibly a small earthquake. However, that is a very strange looking P wave, and the P wave goes down at first. I don't know. That might be an earthquake, but I don't know. Okay, so here's the 3.8. Here is the 3.8, which does have some of the more dominant high frequencies. You notice that? Very strange. Let's change the spectrogram to 55 maximum frequency. Oh, only goes to 50, but we get the same idea. So if this has the same characteristics somewhat as this, then I guess this was an earthquake as well. This doesn't look like an earthquake much at all, or even a tremor event. Definitely looks like some type of surface activity. Another earthquake right there, probably. Very tiny, though. Very tiny. Right here, though. What is this? This does not look like surface activity. What is that? I don't know what that is, but... And another earthquake down there. Another earthquake. So, again, here's the magnitude 3.8. Very strange characteristics, seeing that... There's not much strength in the lower frequency band. Do you notice that? Here, let me zoom in right here, and let's look at the spectra plot, shall we? Look at this. Very weak, very weak power at 2.1 hertz. Very interesting. It does have some, you know, because usually events should go down to about 1 hertz. Always. Always should have some power in the lower frequency band, even if they're high frequency earthquakes. But still... I find that very interesting. Most of the power was mid-range. And the highest peak of the frequency was about 16.4 hertz. Again, here are the waveforms to this event. Extremely high frequencies. Going up to about, I'm going to say on this station, 142,600 amplitude count. All right, so let's zoom out. Turn log power log frequency back on. And let's go look at the aftershock that they reported right here whoa do you see the tail on this thing look at this look at the tail on that thing it looks weird my goodness it looks so weird looks like there's actually an aftershock right there after the 3.8 then a few minutes later we have this one right here which i'm guessing probably going to be maybe a 2.5 maybe maybe 2.0 2.5 this was definitely under probably magnitude 1.5 to 1.0 i don't know then let's scroll down. The 3.2 was uh, reportedly around 1300 UTC, so that's this one right here. Again, this was reportedly a 3.2 earthquake. But look at how long the tail is. Do you see that? I mean, it's not super long, but still, I find that very interesting. Again, I, I'm starting to try to learn about this stuff because I am unsure what a downwards dipping P wave means. In my experience, when I look at the P wave arrivals, a lot of them go up at first. But recently, I have been seeing P waves that go down, which I thought was very interesting. And I do not know what the difference is. If you know what the difference is between an upwards gliding P wave or a downwards gliding P wave, please let me know because I'm still trying to learn about that. But still, I had a downwards dipping P wave. Don't know what that means yet, but I am looking into it. Yeah, very strange earthquakes they have in Oklahoma, guys. Just the characteristics are sometimes very, very odd. And then we have little tiny poppings throughout the day. So that was it for Oklahoma. Now there's one more thing, actually two more things to look at. We did have a, uh, I don't, I'm not going to call it a swarm, but we did have a slight burst in seismicity in Georgia. Of course, there's one in Arkansas and Missouri, right on the New Madrid Fault Zone. But I'm going to take a look. Since we already know the New Madrid Fault is a big danger, we're going to look at the ones a little bit farther away at in Georgia. Let's check it out. Let's see what the closest seismic station is to these two earthquakes and see if there's any ones that they have not reported. The 2.3, 2.3, which occurred three kilometers west of Trenton, Georgia, was at 9.2 kilometers in depth. Two people re reported feeling it. That's it. Probably maybe a few more people actually felt it if that felt report count is accurate. So let's go forward. 
Arrival time, the closest station they say is RCGA in the ET network, short period vertical, zero, zero location code. So what was it again? It was RCGA in the ET network, RCGA in the ET network. Let's go forward, zero, zero location code EHG for the 26th UTC date. Click the link, let's see if it downloads, and it downloaded. So again, we're going to look at the two earthquakes reported for Georgia near the East Coast. The first one was a magnitude 2.3 and 9.2 kilometers in depth. And then about three minutes later, we have a 1.5 at 5.2 kilometers in depth. Again, both striking on the 26th within three minutes of each other. Here we have RCGA in the ET network, short period vertical, 00, zero location code in the seismic program swarm. So we see at 824, we see the first earthquake, right? Apparently, they say it is this right here. Let's go to the frequency band, or excuse me, the spectrogram. I don't know why I said frequency band. <laughs> Let's go to 55, maximum frequency range. Only goes to 50, but that's okay. Very, very weird looking earthquake. Very, very weird. And again, the other one occurred at 1827. So let's go forward and try to see, find the other one. 1827, 27, 27. So they say this one right here was the magnitude 1.5. But look at the waveforms, guys. Very peculiar. I mean, the East Coast has some weird, weird earthquakes sometimes, guys. Very strange. And I, I don't know what these could be caused by. Because they say, yeah, a lot of the earthquake activity on the East Coast can be caused by just small tectonic activity. It's not as active as the West Coast. But some of these earthquakes just do not look like tectonic activity. They don't, they don't even look like volcanic. They don't look like hydrothermal. They don't look like anything I've ever seen before. Seriously, the East Coast has some weird quakes sometimes, guys. So first, here's the magnitude 2.3. Let's look at the dominant frequency range of this Georgia earthquake. Log power log frequency off. Look at that. Look at that. That is the most peculiar spectra plot I have ever seen. Look at this. The dominant frequency start at 10.3 hertz, and then the peak stops at 16.7, but it totally stops at 19.4. Of course, of course, weaker frequencies going below and above, but still, look at that spike right between 10 hertz and 20 hertz. That is very, very peculiar. Now let's go forward to the one at 1827, right here. Now let's see what the dominant frequency range is of this earthquake as well. It looks pretty much the same. It looks a little bit different, but the dominant frequency still remain between 10 hertz and 20 hertz, meaning the source of the first earthquake, the 2.3, most likely also caused the second one as well. But we have a 1.1 at 5.0 kilometers in depth in Pennsylvania, which occurred on the 26th at 2352.07 second mark. Let's click on the event page. Okay, this is weird. This is weird. Um, look at this. 90 people felt a 1.1? What? You're seeing this, right? Because usually, earthquake I mean, of course, earthquakes below magnitude 2.5 can be felt by humans, of course, depending on the different characteristics of the event. But a 1.1, I mean, do you guys know how small 1.1 is? Wow. 0 0.2 below that would be a 0 0.9, right? And 90 people felt this 1.1? What the hell? That is weird. Either this earthquake was like right at the surface and caused by some strange, very powerful source, or this magnitude 1.1 is more like a 2.1. But 90 people reported feeling a magnitude 1.1. That's rare, guys. That many people feeling that small of an earthquake, I have to say that is pretty rare. So why don't we go to origin and go look at the closest seismic station that USGS claims to be near this earthquake epicenter. And from my experience, I do see that when looking at the earthquake event pages and looking at their origins to see what the closest seismic station was, it's usually pretty accurate. Sometimes they do miss a few stations, but most of the time it's pretty accurate. PACW in the PE network. So let's go do that now. So it was a PACW. So let's do PACW dash dash HHZ in the PE network and see if that works. Already got the date and time set up perfectly and looks like it downloaded. And just for your information, this magnitude 1.1 at 5.0 kilometers in depth, which was felt by 90 people, occurred right in this area right here, near Chambersburg, near the Letterkenny Army Depot. Oh, 
Maybe it's related to an accidental explosion or something. I don't know. Or it could just be an earthquake, but a lot of people felt this. And it occurred right near, and this is in Pennsylvania, guys, right between Shale Road and Clearfield Road. Okay, guys, this Pennsylvania earthquake is really freaking me out. Remember, again, repeating myself, but magnitude 1.1 at 5.0 kilometers in depth in Pennsylvania. This magnitude 1.1 was reportedly felt by 90 people who reported to USG as feeling this earthquake. And even though 90 people reported feeling it, which means there's probably a lot more people that felt it, Look at this. This is right where it's supposed to be, right? Let's see. 235207. So that means this is this event right here. Let's go backwards and forwards just to make sure. Yep, that's the event right there. Okay, so we found the earthquake, which is kind of hard to find, and you can't even see it at all because of the background activity. The background activity is remaining around this line right here, so I will add a filter to that. Obviously, the filter, the bandpass filter that I'm going to add is going to cut some of the frequencies of the earthquake out, but I want to just get rid of all the background noise and just show the earthquake itself. So let's just go right here. That's going to be, so 14.5. Okay, so let's do a bandpass filter of 0 0.7 hertz to 14.5 hertz and click OK. Okay, actually, let's just strengthen the filter a little bit. Okay, so look how it did bring out the earthquake a little bit better. You notice that? And you can see it right here. I still do not understand how it's even possible. 90 people felt this earthquake and it barely even registered on the seismic stations, guys. How is that even possible? Let's check out the dominant frequencies of this strange, unknown, weird, peculiar weirdness. <laughs> Let's see, there is a peak of activity at about 0 0.4 hertz to 2.1 hertz and then it slowly went up from there and peaks at about 12.7 hertz and goes down from there so Pennsylvania did have a very strange earthquake what do you think it was caused by because some of the seismic stations just barely even detected the event but 90 people reported feeling it sorry guys I know I'm repeating myself a lot but for a magnitude 1.1 that's pretty rare last but most certainly not least we have a very peculiar earthquake in the United Kingdom Three kilometers east of Dorking, United Kingdom, magnitude 3.3, supposedly at 10.0 kilometers in depth, but I do believe the reported depth is incorrect. England, England, Wales. You can tell it occurred in England. Look it, there's London. There's London right there. And this 3.3 occurred right here, right on the outskirts of London, just to the south. Again, near Goodford and Rygate and Crawley. But it occurred directly under, yeah, they were correct, Dorking and Brockham. So guys, and here's pretty much the line of London right there. So right on the outskirts of London. London really doesn't see that many earthquakes that much, guys. They do see earthquakes here and there, but it's definitely not a normal everyday phenomenon like it is here in the United States. So here's the USGS event page for the magnitude 3.3 near Dorking, United Kingdom, in Britain, just on the outskirts of London, 373 people reported feeling this to USGS and probably to the European Seismic Agency as well. That means many more people actually felt it because not everybody knows how or even wants to report that they felt an earthquake to USGS. Here's just a brief, brief, did you feel it map? Most of them are around the epicenter, but there were people good distance away that did feel this earthquake. The only thing I find interesting is the location uncertainty is plus minus almost 7 kilometers. Almost 7 kilometers of an uncertainty. That's a big uncertainty. So it does look like they did have a very hard time trying to locate this earthquake. Let's go to phases. Let's see what the closest seismic station was to this weird earthquake in London. The closest one was UCC in the BE network. So I already got the date set up right here. So let's enter UCC in the BE network dash dash HHZ, right? Yep, dash dash HHZ. Let's download it and see if it works. Will it work? Yes, it will. And guys, that is how fast it is to download seismic data and look at it in seismic programs. It takes me like 30 seconds, guys. Very quick. So again, the magnitude 3.3 near London occurred on the 27th at 3.42 UTC. So here we are, the 27th at 325. Let's find it. 342 
here it is right here. Remember, it takes a few seconds depending on how far away the station was. This station was actually somewhat far away, but it still did pick it up quite well. Let me zoom out real quick. You can see the P wave arrival. Well, let's zoom in first. There's a P wave arrival, and then the S wave arrival is right about here. I still have trouble finding the exact S wave arrivals. P waves are much easier to locate, but S wave arrivals, I don't know, is it between here or is it between here? I'm guessing it's going to be right about here, but you can obviously see where the P and S waves were. And then the surface waves right here, which frequencies are usually much lower for the surface waves, and that is what we see with this earthquake. Okay, so... 342, 342, let's see, anything before it? Not really. Anything after it? And not really at all. We did have some event right here, but that does not look like any type of earthquake or tremor event. That actually looks like some type of emergent surface noise. However, don't take my word for it because you never know. So let's just analyze this earthquake just real quick. Here's the entire magnitude 3.3 that was felt by, what, almost 400 people, I think. Let's go to the waveforms. Again, we see the waveforms right here. Let's zoom in on to half. P waves, S waves, surface waves. Let's go to the spectrogram real quick. You can see it did carry some lower frequencies, and it is a very peculiar type of earthquake. I'm thinking it occurred much deeper than 10 kilometers. They said the depth uncertainty was plus minus 1.8 kilometers, which means it could have gone all the way up to 11.8 kilometers in depth. But I think it was a little bit deeper than that, guys. Let's go to the spectra plot and check it out. Interesting. Dominant frequencies remain below 6.7 hertz. So let's just say 7 hertz. The dominant frequencies remain below 7 hertz, but the strongest frequencies remain between 2.2 and 0 0.5 hertz. So that's very interesting. So it did have some very strong low frequencies, guys, and not just in the surface waves. Because the surface waves, like Love or Rayleigh waves, do carry much lower frequencies. But it is interesting to note the PNS wave arrivals do have some lower frequencies as well. So it is unknown exactly what process could have caused this earthquake. It does look very peculiar, but that's it for now. I am working on another video, right? Actually, I'm working on about five different videos right now, guys. So if you ever, ever come across the fact that, oh, Ben hasn't posted any content for a few days. Don't worry, I'm always going to be working on something, guys. Let me know what you think about this video. Don't forget to go check my most recent videos and also some of the pages on my website in the Seismic Events drop-down menu and the How To drop-down menu. Again, a link is in the description box below to my website. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will be back soon. If anything major changes by the time I upload this video, I will post it on my blog post. Remember, you should always monitor my Seismo blog and my Quake Swarms blog and the Yellowstone blog too. My Seismo blog is on my main page. You can see the button there. But the Quake Swarms blog and the Yellowstone blog are both in the Seismic Events drop down menu. So I hope you guys all had a great day. And remember, the truth is considered hater fear to those who hater fear the truth. Ben Fariolo signing off.